What's up guys and gals and welcome back to another Division 2 video. If you happen to be new to the channel, then ground and pound that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on post notifications so that way you know each and every time a new video is uploaded or a stream goes live. All you gotta do is reach up there and trigger that bell. You'll never miss a moment where I'm live streaming or when another video is going up. But anyways, I heard the viewage out there as far as the uh, wanting me to do another AR build. But more or less going and doing a 180 than my last and my, my typically my previous. Because usually I'm using Unstoppable Force, Bloodsucker, or Unbreakable. Those will probably be my top three. But they wanted to see something different, so I am here to fulfill all those wants and those questions on my take as far as a more of a DPS build. So I dubbed it the Toilet Paper AR build. Yeah, you're probably scratching your head right now, probably wondering, what is he talking about? Why why did he call it the toilet paper AR build? Because basically, whether it be NPCs or other players, you're turning them all into bungholes and you're just wiping everybody. Yep, you're just completely giving them all dirt naps and uh, teaching them how to go prone in the dark zone. So, anyways, enough of my rambling. Uh, yeah, I know, cringe moment, right? But anyways, let's hop right into the build itself. Now first, uh, as you can see, it's only on normal, and I'm not going to sit here and just shoot all day, but 27, consistently, and we all know that I'm not going after more or less the DPS number, just showing you what actually the individual uh, bullets will actually do. So that's on purples. As you can see, it's very consistent along the lines of 27K. And that is the P416. Now, the actual stat sheet says it's 21.3K, and I'm utilizing preservation. Killing an enemy repairs 10% armor over 5 seconds. Headshot kills improve the repair. Requires 7 or more defensive Legos, and I have 11. And of course, in the second slot, Allegro. 10% rate of fire, and then in the third, stop, drop, and roll. While equipped, rolling removes burning, bleed, and poisoned status effects. Can occur once every 60 seconds. Now, if you prefer the likes of a CTAR or F2000 or even the AK, you know, use uh, an AR and even the secondary if you run two ARs or whatever combination you see fit. Make it, you know, up and tweak it to your personal preference. Um, this is, to my opinion, my personal preference and how I like to run things, uh, especially with the AR to get that extra burst of DPS by utilizing the chatterbox talent blathermouth while holstered reloading your weapon within five seconds after a kill grants 20 percent rate of fire but let's say i want to um, mix it up and try to uh, get better at my potato aim and utilize a shotgun then i will go with the spaz 12 182.3k base and of course the talents are premeditated weapon damage is increased for every shell loaded to a max of plus 35 percent if all shells are reloaded, then weapon damage is increased by an additional 50% lasts for 10 seconds. So basically, the sky's the limit. It all depends on your personal preference. And of course, the sidearm, um, it depends kind of on the situation, but I usually like to run rooted uh, while equipped and in cover. All skill damage and healing is increased by 25% for 10 seconds. Buff is lost when exiting cover and can occur once per 25 seconds. So rooted and preservation kind of synergize really well together if you want to go that route. But yet, if you still want to use the blathermouth as your secondary, but want something that's going to pack a punch, especially when it comes to just completely destroying and getting that final blow in when you're either being rushed or when you're rushing somebody, then God would go actually with the uh, salt off. Uh, that's why I have a, a different setup pending on, you know, how I'm feeling. Do I just want to completely, you know, smash somebody and, and make a statement? Or do I want to more or less be on the, like a defensive, uh, I'd say more tactical line of thinking. So one would be rooted and of course the other would be the shotgun. Now let's actually get into the build. Now for PVE, um, you'd probably want to go with patience on your knee pads. But since we want a, a well-rounded uh, build for all things, not just, you know, PVE activities, but let's say let, if you're in the normalized or the ODZ, then there's elements of all NPCs of all types and plus other players. So you need something that is viable for actually both. So that's why I came up with this. And because of the Dark Zone, or even if you wanted to use this build in Conflict, for instance, 
then you want to run cloaked. And the reason why you want to run cloaked is as followed. This description. When your armor is depleted, nearby enemies, enemy skills are disrupted for 10 seconds, can occur once every 30 seconds. So if you're getting pushed by, you know, either one solo player or however the number of players that they are, but say they're using defender drones or fixer drones or some kind of skill in a shield and you're getting pushed on, when they're in proximity and your armor is depleted, then you can say goodbye to all of those. And plus, you know, they can't, you know, drop their green chem pool and sit there and try to bring back Division 1 zigzag chicken dance. I mean, if that's what you want to do, by all means, I'm not hating, I'm just saying... Uh, you know, there's, I'd rather actually have a gunfight and, and PvP and then instead of just sitting back, you know, making you like yourself look dumb, in my opinion. But, you know, whatever somebody's playstyle is, it's not not for me to decide who and how, you know, you play actually your game that you paid for, right? I just think there there's better ways and, and means of actually PvPing without, you know, utilizing the, the likes of like that. Now, I can understand it being a survivability issue, uh, and if you're in cover and dropping those heals, and if somebody's pushing you, you're trying to heal up fast, something along that lines. But, you know, standing out in the broad middle of the street, just dropping chem pulls at you, that's just not you know my cup of tea but if that's something that you prefer and something along you know your liking then by all means play as you see fit but we are going with cloaked so that way uh, you can deal with the the things of that nature if you encounter it in the dark zone and in the mod slots we have 8167 health 808 armor and then 1183 armor on kill and the other defensive mod, we have 5096 armor, 3% total armor, and then 5% health regen. Now moving on to the second piece of the Gila Guard, in which we get plus 20% hazard protection. On the holster, we have 42,748 health, and then 371 skill power. And the mod slots, in the first one we have 2% weapon damage, 1.5% headshot damage, and 4% optimal range. In the second offensive mod, we have 1.5% well, weapon damage, 2% shotgun damage, and then 5% assault rifle damage. So if we're just utilizing the AR as I have it right now, with the chatterbox as my secondary, from this one mod alone, I am getting 7.5% damage to my AR. So even though the holster doesn't have a talent on it by way of things like devastating, that I'm still actually getting more bang for my buck with utilizing these two offensive mods than I would get from the 5% uh, devastating talent on this holster. Now moving on to the third and final piece. It's the Gila Backpack. The only thing I would necessarily change uh, on this, I mean of course I would change a lot of things as far as just a higher armor and health value on them. But as far as talent wise, instead of on the ropes, if I had to choose what talent that I would like to prefer in this slot, I would probably go with efficient. And the reason why I say efficient is I'll show you uh, here. It's using an armor kit has a 50% chance to not consume the armor kit. So usually by me running such uh, talents like unbreakable, I am unable to use efficient because it directly correlates with armor. Uh, and that would alone uh, not allow Unbreakable to proc. So therefore, uh, doing like that whole 180, I'm actually able to utilize the efficient. So if, in my perfect world, higher base armor value, higher health armor value, and then of course efficient. But as is, we have 14,583 armor, 20,729 health, and 7% weapon damage. And of course, on the ropes, not being used, and then of course, hardened, plus 10% armor. In the mod slots, we get 5107 armor, 3% total armor, and then 1619 armor on kill. And then in the utility slot, 171 skill power, 1% increased burn duration and increased ensnare duration, but basically it was a good chunk of skill power, so that way I could actually use a better mod in my skills. But moving on, now to the two-piece true patriot. Before we actually go over the attributes, let me tell you my line of thinking, the reason why I have the gloves on instead of the True Patriot in my knee pads. Because typically, if it's a pure PvP build, um, there's not too many um, talents that are you know pure PvP when it comes to the mask and knee pads. Of course, Spotter can be both PvE and PvP, but in other words, on the knee pads, you got you know things like Entrenched and 
and things of that nature. Um, you could go with self-adjusting, but you know, hard hitting is PVE. The self-adjusting can be a combination of both. Insulated could be a combination of both, but it's it's more like defensive talents and not really on a PVP offensive side. Right? I mean, if you are, you know, on PC and you like more or less the headshots uh, and can actually hit them and you have a rifle as your secondary, then by all means you can go with entrenched headshots from cover repair 10% of your armor. Now, let's say if your secondary is a rifle and you have uh, entrenched on your knee pads, then entrenched would actually uh, synergize well with rooted and also the likes of my talent on the P416 as your primary, the preservation. Because all, all in all, it, I mean, it helps uh, repair your armor at a percentage value. So, that's my line of thinking on that. And I was trying to get a talent that could meet both needs. Uh, and then I got to thinking as far as on the PvP side, as far as the people rushing you. And utilizing more along the lines of cloaked. Yes, you could probably put patience on there and sitting cover. But that would take 5 seconds before it to kick in. And then that's 5% armor thereafter every second. And that's more of a kind of a passive, um, I hope, you know, somebody else comes to help me out. So what, what talent that, you know, could best be utilized there in a sticky situation to get rid of, you know, shields, drones, or, you know, whatever you may encounter that's being thrown at you. And so that's why I thought uh, Cloak would be better in the knee pads than having True Patriot here. And then, of course, uh, having like a talent on my gloves by way of like devastating or a precise if you're on PC for headshot damage, you know, along that line. So that's my line of thinking there. But speaking of which, let's hop into the next two-piece brand set, or in this case, gear set, and that is the True Patriot. For two pieces, you get 10% multiplicative damage to armor. That is another reason. Now, I could have picked out another pair of gloves that had, you know, assault rifle damage and devastating and probably could get a total of, you know, 15 to 17% uh, weapon damage. But since I do have... 10% on my gloves, and then by having that two-piece two, two Patriot, that plus 10% multiplicative damage. Now, if you want to do the math, uh, that's more along the lines of it's better to have the plus 10% armor than that additional, say, 7% max that you could get for having devastating, and then, of course, the you know higher attribute roll itself uh, by along the lines of like 12%. So, you're missing out on 7% damage, but in the overall damage value, you're getting more bang for your buck by having, you know, the two-piece true patriot than actually having devastating and on a different pair of gloves in this slot. But in this, as you can see, 10% assault rifle damage, and then in health, 12,546. Now on to that second piece, it is the mask. And the attributes on it are 37% damage to elites and 14,449 health. Now, if you wanted to go with uh, crit chance, uh, here instead of the damage to elites uh, it wouldn't really affect you all that well I think you get more usefulness out of possibly damage to elites here uh, So that way you can use this build for anything that the division throws at you if it's just for missions even invaded missions uh, roaming the dark zones whichever one you prefer or even so much as the raid because you're getting a lot of damage to elites it's almost like 50%, and plus you're getting tons of DPS on top of that with the damage to armor. By all means, you're doing a heck of a lot of damage. And I think, you know, if you want a crit chance here, I mean, it would be a small value of crit chance, so it really wouldn't, you know, be that significant. So it's best to have something that's better utilized, such as the damage to elites. Now moving on to the chest piece. It is a Fenris Group AB chest piece. For having one piece, you get 10% assault rifle damage. The attributes are 9% weapon damage, 15,657 health, and then 23,539 armor. And we are utilizing Berserk. Because normally I run Unstoppable, Force, Unbreakable, or Bloodsucker. That's just my three faves. And since uh, I was requested for me to kind of like do a, the other end of the spectrum and go with more of a, a pure DPS build, so to speak, then I went with Berserk. And Berserk is plus 10% weapon damage for every 20% of max armor depleted. Requires seven or more offensive Legos, and we have seven exactly. Now, in the perfect world, uh, of course, uh, higher base weapon damage, you know, higher armor, higher health. Um, but as far as talents wise, you know, I would be even more happier um, with Hardened or Vital here. I would be even more tanky, so that 20% additional health uh, would definitely come in handy. 
Uh, basically, that would be another 30,000 in your health pool. That would put me at 170 uh, in my health. Now, if it was hardened uh, and get 10% uh, additional armor, then that would be on the, along the lines of almost uh, 30 thousand more armor so that would put me in the ballpark anywhere between uh 315 to uh 320 but since we already have damage to our elites on our mask then another 10 percent uh would better help uh for all those uh pve activities especially the things like the raid but since we have high base damage uh, then we can easily take care of purples or reds, and then we have that uh, armor shredding by way of the true piece, a uh, two-piece true patriot. Then you you can kind of see where this is going. So no matter what type of NPC it is, or what kind of player it is, whether it's a armor-based build that they're running or a health pool base, then you're going to shred through both because the AR gives you damage to health, and of course you have the the true patriot that'll give you damage to the armor. So you're basically no matter what's thrown at you, and then when you a company that with cloaked no matter if they come at you with skills they're flying drones that are shooting you or whatever the case may be then you're basically good to go for whatever is thrown at you and in this mod slot we have a one percent weapon damage two percent lmg damage and then five percent assault rifle damage for a total of six percent assault rifle damage just for this one piece now let's go on over to the character sheet i think i've rambled on it enough now starting out let me switch to the P416. 23, 21, 325 weapon damage, zero crit chance, 26 range, 10% accuracy, 2.2 reload time, and then of course the offense, 19.5% all weapon damage bonus, and then 45% assault rifle damage bonus. So well over, say that's 50, 64 and a half, 65, not too shabby. Then, of course, 47% damage to elites. If you want to go a little bit more on the damage to elites to uh, help you out even further with uh, elite or, or named uh, NPCs or bosses, then I don't have any damage to elites on my mods. And so you can get 8% for the optics and then another 5 So you can add another 13% to that and I'll get a total of 60% damage to elites. So that's still a hefty, hefty chunk. And as you see, the 10% damage to armor and then the 29% health damage. Now on the defense, 293, 539 armor, 149, 51 max health, 809 armor regeneration, 73,999 health regen, and then 20% has protection, bleed, blind, burn, disrupt, and shock. On to the skills. Basically, everything's at 542 other than the pulse, but we're not utilizing the pulse. Now, speaking of skill, of course, you know, the chem launcher is basically, you know, uh, a given. Um, and then it just depends on what you want to run here, whether it be the fixer drone um, or any, basically any skill. Um, but you want something that's going to fit with your playstyle and correlate with the build. Um, and since you do have high enough armor on here and all these other things, then you could basically, the sky's the limit, you know, you could either go with something offensive or something to help further fortify your armor and survivability, such as like a fixer drone, or even uh, if you want some additional speed and weapon handling, go with booster hive, you know, personal preference, whatever you choose. But it is a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's uh, what you ask for as far as something different than my 3.11.7 using compensated on the ropes. It's kind of like the other end of the spectrum, more along the DPS side. So I definitely recommend trying it out. It is a lot of fun. And basically, no matter, you know, if your friends hop on and say, hey, can you help me out with an invade mission, with raid, you never have to worry about, well, let me switch builds or there's some kind of crazy glitch going on to where um, it like whatever build you're on no matter if you're in cover or be standing in the base of operations it still will not let you switch builds it happens to uh my buddy end up all the time shout out to end up um you can check out his channel um but anyways uh it happens to him a lot so if you have this on it doesn't matter what someone asks you to do as far as help them wise or you know whatever you you know you want to do this build will be there to do it all so enjoy it have fun we'll see you guys fudging later